and there's a bang on my door and the doorbell's rung like a, like 30 times or something. It just keeps ringing, ringing, ringing. Well, I said, well, who is it? And they said, it's the FBI. On September 23rd, 2022, Mark Houck's children awoke to FBI agents banging on their front door. I was scared and I looked out the window and there was a lot of police there. And I saw guns putting up Ronnie and Daddy. They were all the way lying down my driveway and I had agents on my porch with long guns. I was shaking. I, I didn't even really know why he even was arrested. Those authorities were there to arrest their father at the direction of President Joe Biden's DOJ. We were definitely targeted to silence us, to scare us, to intimidate us. The United States versus how was not something we would wish for, but we recognized that we were called to, that God had created us for such a time as this. The DOJ charges against Mark stemmed from a 2021 incident where Mark pushed an abortion clinic volunteer who was harassing his son. Local authorities ultimately dismissed these charges. On October 13, 2021, uh, Mark and I arrived at noon. We began our rosary and uh, had no incident till about 12.45. He walked over and my dad, as he's walking over, is telling him to go back, like, leave us alone. Uh, he doesn't listen and he leans up against the wall like about a foot from me and said, your dad's a bad person, your dad's hurting women. At this point, it was dad. It was just being dad. Dad steps in and says, leave us alone, go back. And then my dad's like, all right, go back. Uh, don't talk to my son. And he leads him back. My dad turns back around to me. The next thing I know, he's talking to my son again. So I turn and I just have a reaction, I push him. And that was, that was it, that was the incident. Um, he did fall to the ground. I did not intend for him to fall. I just was intending for him to get away from my son. The police department didn't want to do anything with it. The DA didn't want to do anything with it. Civil affairs weren't doing anything with it. He had to file a private criminal complaint in Philadelphia Municipal Court. So it's at the state level. Preliminary hearing comes, case is dismissed. Five days later on April 27th, I get a target letter from the Department of Justice, Eastern District of Philadelphia. Have your attorneys contact us. You're a target of a federal grand jury investigation. My attorney contacts the, uh, the assistant U.S. attorney and says, you have no case. My client is innocent and uh, there's case law in your district against this. But should you want to indict him, no need to bring an agent out to his house. We'll come down peacefully. I'm up on Friday, September 23rd at 6.30 in the morning. It's dark outside. I can't see a thing. Uh, I'm down here and there's a bang on my door, really loud. And the doorbell's rung like, a, like 30 times or something. It just keeps ringing, ringing, ringing. Well, I said, well, who is it? And they said, it's the FBI, bang, 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 again. I said, okay, stay calm. I have seven babies in here, please. Stay calm. So I open the door and I show my hands as I'm coming out because I knew that would be important. But what I saw was the last thing I would expect to see. There was 15 marked and unmarked units in my property. And I said, what are you doing here? And they said, well, you know why we're here. I hadn't quite gotten out of bed yet, but I saw some flashing lights on the wall across from my bedroom. We live you know, very much in the middle of nowhere, so I wasn't expecting that. I immediately start walking towards the door, but before I even got to our bedroom door, I hear pounding and the doorbell ringing. The children are woken up, and as soon as I start coming down the stairs, then a gun starts is pointed at me. I see everything that's happening downstairs. I don't go downstairs, but I just start crying. Uh, so when I see all my siblings crying, I stay on the steps and I try to, all my siblings are trying, I kind of tried to keep them upstairs away from the officers and the FBI. We're all upset and, but Mark like tried to tell us to go back to our room, but we were like, we can't go back to our room. The girls uh, were uh, outside uh, the door crying. And I asked them what's wrong and they didn't answer and they looked downstairs and I saw guns putting up Ronnie and Daddy. Oh my gosh. Were you scared? Yeah. I was scared for my children who were all screaming and crying and that was very difficult because, um, you know, my natural inclination would be just to go to them. But at the same time, I, I didn't know what was happening and I, I needed to get some information. And I say to them, um, where's your warrant? 
and they said that they were taking him with or without a warrant. But then one of the officers or one of the people who were on the porch said, um, why don't you get him a sweatshirt? And when I came downstairs, they had already taken him away. So um, I'm not sure, you know, if they actually were allowing him to get a sweatshirt or they just wanted me to leave. Were you panicked when you came down and your husband was gone? Yes. I was shaking. Like, my body was physically shaking. Um, I felt like I couldn't breathe. The kids just kept asking me, you know, when daddy was coming home, why they think that he's a bad man. They don't know the difference between FBI or state troopers. It's just like their idea of police officers is, you know, they're heroes, they're virtuous. Um, they're good people who take bad people away. And so they didn't understand why these people thought that their daddy was a bad person. And so we get to the federal building. Now I'm cuffed in my hands. They fingerprint me. They shackled me in my waist. And then they shackle my, my ankles tightly. And I have bare ankles because they wouldn't let me put socks on. And then I'm chained to a table in a really small room. I felt at peace. I had tremendous peace. I was at the foot of Calvary. I was there with Jesus. And I prayed without ceasing for six hours. They brought me down to the U.S. Marshals and I was treated like a dog there. Uh, I was treated like a, a, a felon, a convicted criminal. The language and the tone was, was just that, 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 that's who you are. By the time I was done, it was about eight or 10 hours later and I was reunited with my family. We embraced and, and of course, you know, began the journey towards the trial. Mark's arrest sparked massive backlash across the nation, particularly since at the same time, far left radicals were attacking and firebombing pro-life pregnancy centers across the nation. And DOJ officials who had called these pregnancy resource centers fake and predatory were doing very little in response. Yes, that boggles everyone, right? The FBI is there for all of us, not just one issue. It is biased, it's partial. If the government can come after this guy who's completely innocent, why can't they come after me? And I think it resonated with everybody. We were definitely targeted. I don't know why other than to silence us, to scare us, to intimidate us. Maybe they legitimately was like, well, this is an American family that we're going to show that even if you are just a normal family, you can't do these types of things. Joe Biden said that he was going to do anything at all costs to protect abortion rights. And Mark is, a, is effective at saving human life. As Mark faced the prospect of 11 years in prison away from his wife and his children, the DOJ offered him a plea deal. If he admitted he was guilty, his sentence would be significantly reduced. So we, we have the FACE Act being applied to us, which would give a sentence if convicted of 11 years in prison, 10 for one count and one for another, and a $350,000 fine attached to that and three years supervised probation. On January 6th, they come forward on a Friday afternoon with a plea offer. The federal government doesn't offer pleas. So the DOJ came to you beginning of January and said we can make all this go away, basically. Uh, essentially, yeah, we can, we can you know, spare you the trial and, uh, and just, you know, you'll, you'll have your normal life back, basically. It was always gonna be a no. And we saw this as a tremendous injustice, that this was an overreach of government. This was a big moment for the pro-life movement and a big moment for our country. And so United States versus how was, was really just not something we would wish for, but we recognized that we were called to, that God had created us for such a time as this. The night before the trial, we were in all night adoration. The whole thing was coded in prayer. My attorneys were coded in prayer. The judge was coded in prayer. The prosecution was coded in prayer. Everything was, was about prayer and was about grace. The only time I got nervous was the last two minutes before the jury came out. And the best words of the day were, Mr. Hauk, you are free to go. And that, and that really broke me because I didn't feel like my life was my own. And even though I was inwardly free, I was inwardly free of, uh, of whatever they would do to me. I knew that, that I was truly free in every sense of the word. 
Mark and his family are incredibly grateful to have escaped the DOJ charges, but the ordeal has thrown into relief the Biden administration's chilling determination to punish political dissidents. Children are the true victims in all this. After the arrest, they were traumatized, and they're still traumatized till this day. This was not necessary. Someone could have been shot that day. If my little ones grabbed one of our airsoft guns, they would have been shot. I could have been shot. It was an act of pure terror on the part of the government. Intimidate me and instill fear in my family and me and in the pro-life America. And we realized this throughout the trial, that this was actually what was going on. I think they underestimated the pro-life movement. They certainly underestimated me and my wife and my children. President Biden and Merrick Garland and, and the director of the FBI, there's gonna be consequences to the choices they've made. That's just, and that may be realized in this life or that may be realized in the next life. They're trying to silence and scare people into compliance, into submission. We're going to share the truth and that truth is that there were 20 to 25 FBI agents at my home with guns pointed at my family, arresting my husband, who is a non-violent person with no prior. We're gonna hold the government accountable. We're gonna pursue justice so that others don't have what happened to us happen to them. So that this never happens again in our country. Our founding fathers would not have wanted this to happen. This is not what we set up our, our republic to be. It's the FBI. They knew exactly what they were doing. That's what I want people to know, is just that this really happened in America.